Hi, my name is Sam Berglund, and I'm a software research engineer at Metalens. Today I'm going to be discussing how we can combine unitful quantities with chainrules.jl to enable scalar automatic differentiation with unitful.jl. I found this work helpful for building kind of a mnemonic for understanding how chain rules AD works, and it involves differentiating through structures within Julia rather than deriving complex mathematical differentiation rules. Before we get started, I want to note that this work is available at the repository below, and it's already been published on the general registry. Let's start by describing how we want to think about physical quantities. A physical quantity has a numerical value and some units attached to it. The value tells us how much we have, or a measurement, and the units tell us what we measured and what scale we used. Units combine multiplicative, multiplicatively without a problem, but we can only add quantities if they share the same units. In school, we learn to dimensionally analyze algebraic equations to understand their physical significance. We can extend this to calculus, where we think about differentiating as taking the ratio of units. For example, if we have velocity, which is the derivative of position with respect to time, we can approximate it with finite differentials. If the differential dx is 2.2 meters, and the differential dt is 4.4 seconds, we divide the numerical quantities to arrive at a value of 0.5, and we divide the units to arrive at units of meters per second. We handle the numerical quantities as a parallel but independent division problem from the units. In Julia, if we want to work with physical quantities, we can use unitful.jl. Unitful exposes the quantity type which contains a single field, val. Val contains the numerical value associated with the quantity, but no other information. To fully describe a quantity, we use three type parameters, t, d, and u. t encodes the underlying numerical type for val, and it's used for any arithmetic that we do between quantities. D tells us the dimension, or the fundamental physical type of the quantity. A dimension would typically be length or mass or time, but it doesn't speak to the scale we use for measurement. Only quantities which share their dimensions can be added together, but multiplying quantities also multiplies dimensions. U tells us the units, or the scale of the dimensions that we're using. Unitful handles conversions between different unit systems for us, allowing us to work with whatever units are convenient. The common story between the physical quantities from the sciences and unitful is the separation of a quantity into a numerical value and then the units that we attach to that value. Let's turn our attention from unitful quantities to auto differentiation within Julia. For most auto diff packages in Julia operating in reverse mode, we're concerned with the R rule or reverse rule from chain rules.jl. R rules are used to specify how we perform a normal forward calculation called the primal as well as how we backpropagate a derivative or gradient through that operation. R rules are defined for a specific function and the arguments that we pass to that function. The R rule also returns two things. The primal calculation, typically denoted by capital omega, and a function we call the pullback. The pullback is used for backpropagation through the function. I mean, think of the pullback as mapping some perturbation on the output back to a derivative on the input. Another way of putting this would be to say that the pullback takes some delta or wobbliness on the output, and we distribute that delta amongst all the input arguments to the function. The weight we apply to each of those arguments is given by the derivatives that we know from calculus. Concretely, let's say we have a function times eight, which multiplies a number by eight. We know the derivative with respect to that number is just the constant eight. When we backpropagate through this function, we think about what should be the derivative with respect to x if we pass in a unit perturbation given by delta. The derivative is just a constant 8, and so to backpropagate, we just have to multiply our perturbation by 8 as well. The pullback is a function which takes in that perturbation and returns the perturbation times 8. If this function were present in some larger calculation, delta would be the total perturbation from other calculations, rather than just 1. Now that we've discussed unitful quantities and R rules, we're ready to present the R rule for unitful quantities. Recall on the last slide, we looked at the rule for multiplying some value x by the constant 8. The pullback there is just multiplying the perturbation by that factor 8. If instead of 8, we think about units as the multiplicative factor, we can differentiate through making a value into a quantity just by multiplying by those units, or appending those units back onto the perturbation. So what we want is to specify the R rule for the constructor of unitful quantities, which just takes as input some value x. First, we compute the primal, which is just the unitful quantity that we expect. Then we define the pullback function for the constructor. 
The differentiation rule for a quantity is just multiplying by the units to reintroduce them. Much like our pullback on the last slide, just multiply the perturbation by 8. Thus, any perturbation that we feed into the pullback gets distributed entirely to the original number x, and we just need to fix it up with the proper units by reintroducing those units with the one unit function. One unit just gives us the multiplicative identity with the units of the primal attached. This rule on its own composes with the scalar arithmetic rules from chainrules.jl to immediately enable auto differentiation with uniform quantities. All we needed to do was to make sure that we propagate the units. Without this rule, most AD systems don't quite know how to handle the units from Unifil.jl. So how does this work in practice? Let's say we have some potential energy given by U, and we want to calculate the force experienced by a particle in this potential. From classical mechanics, we know we can compute this force as the negative gradient of the potential. On the right, we define a simple harmonic potential with a coefficient of 3 newtons per meter centered at 200 centimeters. Unitful properly handles the units to give us a potential energy of 13.5 newton meters at 5 meters. To compute the force, we use zygote to take the negative gradient of the potential at 5 meters. With the R rule implemented from the previous slide, we can see that zygote correctly calculates a force of negative 9 newtons, including the simplification of units from Unitful. Unitful and chain rules manage the arithmetic between multiplying quantities and converting lengths into a common unit basis and all we needed to supply was the rule for backpropagating through quantities. Julia takes care of composing the rest of the problem. To this point, we've only discussed scalar AD with quantities. Unfortunately, full integration with all of the chain rules methods for arrays and some scalar operations don't quite work with just the constructor R rule. Many of these issues stem from the proper restrictions to commutative numbers for many rules within chain rules. Although a quantity can be commutative if the backing value is afloat, Julia's type hierarchy means that quantities exist outside of the commutative numerical types. Unfortunately, expanding the rule definitions to all numbers so we can include quantities also incorrectly extends the rule definitions to numerical types which are not commutative, such as quaternions. There are some issues open on the chain rules repository for discussing this and related issues, including how to handle operations which require associativity instead of commutativity. A handful of scalar operations can also introduce poorly behaved gradients. Absolute value, for example, needs a custom rule for quantities, without which the quantity type is deconstructed to a named tuple. Likewise, trig functions such as sine and tangent with angles in unitful degrees require custom rules, or else they behave as their unitless counterparts. This work is available now as a light dependency on the general registry under unitful chain rules. Loading the custom differentiation rules should only require loading unitful chain rules alongside unitful. I found that this line of thinking about how units propagate in an auto differentiation system to be helpful for understanding how we think about R rules and pullbacks in the general case within chain rules. If you have any questions about this talk or issues with using unitful chain rules, please let me know and I'm happy to try to help. Thank you.